Good morning and welcome to our 11 a.m. worship service here at Kilmarnock United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Penny Corey and sisters and brothers in Christ. Let us turn our focus from ourselves and let us turn our thoughts to hearing from God's voice. I'd like to share some of our announcements. Bert and I had a visit from Doug and Teresa Irving yesterday. They came to tell us that they are moving to Victoria, Virginia by the end of June. <clears throat> because of the activities that are involved with packing and moving, Doug will be unable to provide the piano and organ concert that he had planned for Saturday, 20, June 24th. He's very sorry for this, but says, please continue to lift us up in prayer for strength and guidance in this move. He says, we appreciate very much all the love and support and cards and flowers and prayers that they have <coughs> received from the members of KUMC. They want you to know that you have definitely been a wonderful family of God for them, and they will miss us. <clears throat> we would ask you, please, to register your attendance in the pads that are in the pews and pass them down and then back to the center if you would. Please um, stand and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Come to the water. Let us affirm our baptismal covenant together. From the waters of the flood, God preserved life, water of the flood, God preserved life giving righteousness and a new beginning. In the waters of the Jordan River, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed by God's Spirit. In the waters of the baptism, Christ set us free from sin and death. We are reclaimed as Christ's sons. In all the waters of baptism, we are reborn by the power of the Spirit. Let us pray together. Eternal God, your spirit moved on the waters at the beginning of time, and there was the light of your first creation. Your spirit moved on the waters of our baptism, and again there was light in our souls and hearts. May your creative spirit be at work in our hearts as we worship you now and always. I would ask if you would turn in your faith, we sing hymnals to 2248, and we will sing Baptized in Water.
may be seated. Um, today we were, are going to have a service of baptism, and we have asked our children to come and sing for us in preparation for that. Today is a special day. Every baptism is a child of God receiving God's blessing and God's anointing. And this family comes to bring this child for God's blessings today. Um, Shannon and Noah, would you come stand with me? Some of you might be saying, well, I don't remember seeing Shannon and Noah and little Spencer before, um, but Shannon has been here many times. Um, we know Jim and Sherry Bennett, and uh, Shannon is like family to Jim and Sherry. And um, Jim and Sherry's son that passed away was Shannon's best friend, and so, it's special today for Shannon and Noah and Spencer, but it's also special today for Sherry and Jim and the rest of the family. Um, the baptismal covenant in the United Methodist Church is God's word to us, proclaiming our adoption into the family of God by grace. This special baptismal service is conducted in a public worship service where this child will be raised in the faith and loving nurture of the parents, the grandparents, the godparents, the extended family, and the congregation who today make a commitment to raise this child in a way that pleases God. We are baptizing Spencer into the family of faith. And so now I would ask if the godparents would come and stand with us up here. The godmother is Melanie Lindemann, and the godfather is Corey Marshall. I would ask for the congregation to turn to page 39 in your hymnals, and if um, we will um, do the 
renunciation of sins and the profession of faith. Um, yeah. On behalf of the whole church, we ask you, Shannon and Noah, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject of the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Page 39. Oh, 40? Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we do. Okay. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and the example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life? Amen. And so now I say to the congregation, do you as the Christ body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and the life of this person now before you in your care? Uh, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that he may be grow in their service to others and will pray for him that he may be true disciples who walks in the way to life. Brothers and sisters, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts and salvation and given new birth through the water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us. This morning, I present to you Spencer Bennett Lindemann Borgerson for baptism. And now we will have some special music. So. Then little children were brought to him that he might put his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed from them. Matthew 19, verses 13 through 15. <laughs>
I'd like to say a prayer over the, th the water. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, that they may share in his final victory. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be drops of your mercy. Let these waters remind us of your righteousness and justice. Let these waters renew us in the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for your second coming. Let these waters be a sign of salvation. What name do you give to this child? Amen. Hey, Spencer. How are you? How are you? <laughs> Spencer. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you that you might be a new child filled with his love and his power and his spirit. You want to touch it? Oh. <laughs> and also, can you open this for me? Spencer. This is a special anointing oil. I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit be work within you that being born through the water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit to be one of his children and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Can the people of God say amen? Amen. amen? amen. And now it is our joy to welcome our newborn brother in Christ. Could you turn to page 43 in your hymnal? Join me in this welcome. <clears throat> Members of the household of God, I commend Spencer to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of this church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now, Spencer, may the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. So do we welcome little Spencer into our family. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. yes, you're not shy at all. <laughs> what a special boy, that is right. And I know that he's going to be a blessing to us because I know Shannon and Noah are going to bring, back, bring him back to see us again and again. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to love Spencer and to bring him into the Christian faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
We now come to the time that we um, share our celebration of prayers and um, take them to God's throne of grace and mercy. I have several to share with you, but if you have filled out one of the prayer cards, if you will hold those up, someone will come and pick them up for us. I would ask prayers for safe travel for all who will be traveling to Roanoke um, to our Virginia Annual Conference June Wednesday, uh, June 14th through the 17th. Um, and for all the clergy and laity that will be present there. Continue prayers for Doug and Teresa as they make plans to move by the end of June. Healing prayers for Dawn McGonigal, who will be having kidney transplant on Thursday, June 15th. Prayers for Sue Forrester, who had some surgery to remove skin cancer on her face this week. Laura Reeves says, thank you for your prayers and support after Dave, her husband's fall last week. And I'd like for us to remember to pray for all of those who were so affected by the shootings this week on the campus of VCU. We pray for company, comfort and peace for the family and friends of the father and the son who died in those shootings and the others who were wounded. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear God, we feel your presence near to us. Our baptismal vows call us to compassion and mercy on behalf of others that are in need. Lord God, we pray for your church. We pray for pastors, leaders, and workers who choose to follow Jesus. Bless our missionaries and empower them by your Holy Spirit to share the good news of Jesus Christ wherever they serve. Lord God, you revealed your son, Jesus Christ, in the baptismal waters of the Jordan River and anointed him with the affirmation of the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news to all people. Sanctify us and bless us this day with that same Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray to you for one another in our need. To those who doubt, give light. To those who are ill and weak, give your strength. To all who have sinned, give your forgiveness and peace. Thank you for hearing our prayers, those spoken and those unspoken. Forgive us of our sins that we might see our personal freedom from them in answer to our prayers today. For we know miracles can happen when we choose to forgive and serve you. Give us grace and peace to do all things in your mighty name. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like now to call Mary Lorenzino up as she does our Sunday school promotion. Well, good morning. What a super exciting Sunday this is. I'm going to use this mic if that We are so excited that our school year has ended, um, and we would like to recognize our children and youth for all their hard work this year um, during Sunday school hours. I would like to call up our Sunday school leaders, Ms. Sherry, if you'd come and join me up here, and also Ms. Margaret Nost, if you would come and join us up here as well. These ladies have been so dedicated this year in helping to bring up our children and youth in the Word of God, and 
I wish I had so many gifts of praise and thanks to give them, but gratitude to you both for your constant love and outpouring on these children and coming every Sunday, dedicating your time to make sure that our children are raised up in the word. And that's tremendous. And we thank them for that. We um, are going to go ahead and present our awards to our children. I will call them if they are here. Please join us up front, children. Um, Miss Merida Van Leeuwen, she has been in our three-year-old program and she will be promoted up to our three and four-year-old program. Here we go. You can just stand right up here. Miss Jane Nost, she is in our three-year-old program as well when she comes to visit us. Elliot Lorenzino just finished up kindergarten and will be promoted to first grade. Thank you. Right Elliot. Aiden will be, uh, just finished first grade and will be moving to second grade program along with Bryce graduated from first grade and moving to second grade program. Declan Van Leeuwen just finished first grade and will be promoted to second grade. Landon, who completed second grade and will be moving up to third grade. Audrey Lorenzino, who just completed third grade and will be moving up to fourth grade. Mr. Jamie Lang just finished fourth grade and will be promoted up to fifth grade. We also have Caroline Wagner who has just started joining us. Um, she has finished first grade and will be moving to second grade. We also have Aubrey Summers and Maddie Summers and Alexis Alley who are in Miss Margaret Nose class. Um, and they will also be promoted to both the eighth grade and senior. So we are so proud of all of you all and all of your hard work that y'all have done this year. And we're excited for our summer program and vacation Bible school. And we will continue to grow this year. This, um, if y'all look at Mr. Burt while Miss Mary talks, Declan, thank you. We're excited that this allows us to be in every Sunday school class down the educational wing. That's four classrooms now. That is phenomenal. I'm so excited for this program, which also means I need a few more teachers in the fall. So if you feel called by any way, shape, or form, I will give you the material, present that to you, work with, with what your gifts are to make sure that we have um, a program for each one of these kids. It's an hour long. Um, if you're able to give any of your time or gifts to that one week or all 36 weeks, whatever you're able to give, we would greatly appreciate that. But we're so excited for the growth that they have been doing. And we want to um, thank you boys and girls and their parents and grandparents for making it a point to get them here um, each and every Sunday. So thank you. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry, Pastor Penny. We have the wonderful opportunity to present a third grade Bible to Audrey Lorenzino. Yep. Come on over, Audrey. All of us have watched Audrey grow up and um, seen her beautiful smile and the way she hugs people. Um, so actually, we're giving this Bible to you to read and for it to bless your life. But I want to say to you, you have blessed our lives by being here. So we love you. Yeah. I'd like for us all to turn in our hymnals now to 883. We're going to stand and affirm our faith together, and then we're going to sing our Gloria Patre. So would you stand, please? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating 
who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. bring an offering to God in his sanctuary and praise his holy name. Let us give our generous gifts, tithes, and offerings to God. Let the ushers come. Let us pray. Dear God, bless the gift and the giver and multiply these gifts for the kingdom's use in and through our church and world. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
say to us today. The baptism of Jesus. This is from Matthew, the third chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Then Jesus came up from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now. It is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God. Thank you, the word of God. Thank you, Thank you, God. Let us pray. Lord, let the glow of your love shine through my whole being. May the people not see me, but see and experience Jesus. Hold me by your divine strength that I might glow radiant and clear with your light in my heart. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scriptures that we have read this morning are Matthew's description of the baptism of Jesus. When John baptized Jesus, God expressed his pleasure in verse 17. A voice from heaven said, This is my son, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. So today, how can we please God? It is a very simple answer. We please God when we follow the steps of Jesus. A baptized believer is to remember who he or she is. When we are baptized... We choose to identify with Jesus. This text teaches us what is expected of us as Jesus' disciples. Baptism calls us to participate in the transformation of the grace of God. So, I would say to those who are here today... Some of you may not have been baptized, and after hearing this sermon and seeing this beautiful service of baptism, you may desire to be baptized if that is the case, and I would ask you to come and talk with me. Our ancestors of the faith understood the value of water, and the images of water abound throughout the scriptures. The Bible begins in Genesis with the waters covering the face of the earth and the Bible ends in Revelation with the vision of the river of God that flows from the throne of God. In the Exodus story we read of Moses floating down the river in a basket as a baby and then later we hear that he leads the children of Israel through the divided waters of the Red Sea. In the New Testament, we know that Jesus walked on water. Jesus calmed a storm while they were in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. And he talked about the living water with a Samaritan woman who had come to the well to get water. And there she encountered Jesus, and her life was forever changed as he offered to her the living water. Jesus also healed a man born blind by putting mud on his eyes, and then he told the man to go and wash in the pool of Siloam to complete his miracle. And so we see many examples 
of water and new life and healing and wholeness in the Bible. So water serves as a reminder of how God is always ready to clean us up. He's always ready to forgive us when we repent of our sins, of our shortcomings, our mistakes, and our wrongdoings. God is asking us today to prepare for the coming kingdom of God through the act of believing in him and through baptism. The Christian church today still continues the use of water as a sign of new life in Jesus Christ. For we become children of God no matter what age we are baptized. The waters of our baptism flow into our lives and encourage us to meet Jesus as Messiah, to meet Jesus as Lord and Savior. You know, the good news is that to be saved and to receive forgiveness of our sin, we don't need to carry a water bottle. We don't need to have a hydration pack, backpack on our shoulders because the source of living water lives inside of us. For no matter how much we give of ourselves for the sake of the gospel, there will always be more to give to others. We and those we serve will be renewed and we're fished. Those we serve will see the goodness of God. Those we see will see the joy of the Lord in us. And guess what? God always supplies our need. We never run out because God supplies our needs. The source of our water never ends. We just need to draw from the wonder water and remember who we are. So today, who do you say that you are? Do you want to be refreshed and renewed today? Do you want to believe in the miracle of the wonder water that gives new life? Do you want to be forgiven of your sins? As you leave the service today, there are bowls of water at both of our exit doors. I would ask you to simply touch the water and say, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to obey God's word. And as a reaffirmation of your own baptism, say... I remember my baptism, and I am thankful. I want to tell you about an amazing story of our closing hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Born in 1735, 17-year-old Robert Robertson walked the streets of London in gangs, he never cared anything about his spiritual life because when he was just a small boy, his dad died. Without a father to love him, to guide him, without a father that would show him the way, Robert soon fell in with bad companions. One day the gang harassed a drunken gypsy and demanded that she tell their fortunes for free. Pointing her finger straight at Robert, she told him that he would live to see his children and his grandchildren. That struck a chord, struck a tender spot in his heart, and he said, if I'm going to see my children and my grandchildren, he thought, I will have to change my ways. A few nights later, Robert decided that he would go to a tent meeting to hear a Methodist preacher, George Whitfield. That night, Whitfield preached on the text from Matthew 3, 7. 
It's an old generation of vipers who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Robert left that meeting with a sense of dread. He felt like he was that generation of vipers. Robert felt a deep sense that George Whitfield had preached that sermon straight to him alone. Finally, at the age of 20, Robert made peace with God and immediately set out to become a preacher himself. He wrote a letter to George Whitfield and told him that he envied the happiness that he saw on the faces of those people that were in the tent. Two years later, in 1757, Robert wrote a hymn that expresses his joy in his new faith. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. I want you to imagine now a beautiful fountain. That fountain is flowing with water that never gives out. That's God's love being poured out on you right now. Robert wrote, streams of mercy, never ceasing, calls for sounds of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Oh, praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. My friends, that's what we're talking about this morning, the love of God. Because of the love of God is in the sanctuary, we can experience the same kind of grace and love and mercy that Robert experienced. Jesus' radiance and God's glory are here. Jesus provides for you and for me with the purification of our sins He makes us pure and holy as he is. You and I can know Jesus today. Jesus is enduringly the same Savior that Robert met that night at the revival tent meeting. The scriptures tell us the Lord is near to all who have a repentant heart. The Lord is near to all who show sorrow or remorse. The Lord is gracious in forgiving sins. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul says, if anyone, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus forgives the sinner, but he forgets the sin. Let me say that again. Jesus forgives the sinner and he forgets the sin. Jesus creates and he cleanses. Jesus heals and he helps. Jesus restores and he rebuilds. Jesus comforts and he loves. He is the God of second chances. He is Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we put ourselves in your hands today. Show us the way to grace. Let the power of your precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary intercede on our behalf today, for we want to put you first in our lives. Today we have felt the power of God We have heard the power of God. We have experienced your amazing grace. And we thank you for filling us with the power of your Holy Spirit. May all three manifestations of God be revealed in us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have your way in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I would ask you to turn to hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I would ask 
that we sing just verse 1 of this beautiful hymn. Let us stand. this place. Remember your baptism has named you beloved. Remember your baptism has claimed you as an heir of God. Remember your baptism is an act of holy boldness to stand for God. Touch the water and remember your baptism and go out and tell the stories of how Jesus has changed your life with his amazing grace. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, Amen.